Hey everybody, welcome to the Rich State of Mind YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be talking about adjusting your real estate investing goals so that, or criteria to meet your goals. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because uh, personally, as we're going through our real estate portfolio, identifying, you know, what's good, what's bad, what can be worked on, uh, we're, we're noticing that we need to change uh, some of the ways that we do things or some of the, really the properties that we have how we need to adjust them. And when I say adjust, uh, maybe increase the rents, uh, maybe look at securing some uh, tenants long, uh, longer, more long-term, or maybe selling the property period. And so for one uh, situation, we have a duplex that has gone up in value in the last 18 months. I bought it for 130. We're looking at selling for 190. Hopefully I can get it to 200, but we'll say 190, right? So in the last 18 months, you know, 138 to once, you know, 190, what was it, $50,000, so 52. So, you know, what we're looking at is looking at properties that fit the fit our new criteria. Our new criteria is $650 per month in net cash flow. This is after mortgage, this is after property manager, if I decide to do it, this is after putting money aside for vacancy, putting money aside for, uh, repairs and put money aside for CapEx. I'll put a note card uh, on a video that we have on how much money you should put aside per unit because it involves those things. So it's, it's, okay, it's okay to change as you progress in your real estate investing journey. It is okay to change uh, your direction based on what your family needs or whatever uh, direction you decide you want to go with your uh, real estate portfolio. And so I'm a multi-unit type of guy. I like multi-units, but for me, you know, the way we're looking at it now, if a single family meets that criteria, that $650 a month net cash flow criteria, then that's fine. So what we're looking at doing is we're looking at selling the home, selling the uh, home for 190. We can do a couple of things. I can do a 1031 exchange and then take the profit that I don't have to pay tax on and buy a property that is equal to that value or greater. So we're looking at $72,000 in profit. So I could take that 72 and maybe buy a more expensive duplex or maybe buy a triplex or a quadruplex with that money. And so uh, with a 1031 exchange, pretty much what that is, is that I can, I have to talk to, at least in this area, I have to talk to a bank they set up the paperwork where I initiate the 1031 exchange. Uh, then that 1031 exchange paperwork is forwarded to my lawyer. My lawyer drafts it up. And then that's when I communicate with my future loan officer and saying, hey, you got 45 days to find, identify a property. And then you got 180 days to close on that property. Or if I don't want to be underneath that stress because I don't want to, uh, it's going to maybe take me more than 45 days to find a property. Uh, that is equal to or greater, maybe I want to buy something smaller that provides me more cash flow. So I'll have to pay the taxes on that profit at 71000 So that's when I talk to my accountant. My accountant would say, hey, look, this is how much of the $71,000 you need to uh, put aside because of taxes. And then now I can roam free. So let's just say $15,000 out of the $71,000 have to be uh, set aside. Okay, I got fifty grand. I could buy me a, a single family home that is worth 30,000, maybe put 20 grand into uh, repair. So I'm now $50,000 in, get, it get appraised for 120, do a cash out refinance at 70%. 70% of 120, we'll just say that's 80. Well, I'll do the math real quick. Do the math real quick. So I'm not throwing out crappy numbers. So 70%. Of 120, 184,000. So I put in 50, I get back 84,000. So now I got $34,000 more than what I put in. And now I can go ahead and do that again. And so that will be called the burst strategy. So I have a video, uh, I have multiple videos or interviews on that strategy, actually. So I'll definitely put either the note card at the top or I'll do descriptions at the bottom for those multiple videos on the burr method. So there's two ways you can go about it. So I really want to do this video to give my personal experience 
As an example, you can do the 1031 exchange and not have to worry about paying taxes, but you got to get something of equal exchange or greater and you have a timetable or get taxed, use the, the less money that you do have to buy a fixer upper, fix it up, make sure the ARV, which is after repaired value, uh, is makes sense, right? You want to go by that 1% rule or, or better. Cool thing about doing the burst strategy is when you buy this fixer upper, everything's already fixed. You don't have to worry about a bunch of uh, repairs down the line, probably for months. And then what single family homes, if that's what you do it with, because you're probably going to get a single family home for 20, 25 grand, unless you get a multifamily that's completely trashed. Uh, people tend to take care of those homes like it's their home because it's a single family home versus an apartment. Uh, so different ways you can go about it. See what works best for you off of your real estate portfolio, what your goals are, uh, and make those adjustments. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe, please like, and have a good day.